am, uh, as some of you may know, I am a big college football fan. I love going to the games. And I'm going to tell you why I'm a, a big college football fan and how I developed this passion for the great American sport of college football. It's traditionally played on Saturdays, Saturdays in the fall. And it's where people get together, get to enjoy tailgate, uh, different types of food, maybe drink a little more than they should, eat types of weird food. It is a great atmosphere. Uh, it gets people away from the everyday life just to unwind for the week, for the weekend. Now I became uh, a Penn State fan. My dad was a Penn State fan. Uh, Joe Paterno, legendary coach, won two titles in 1982 and 1986. But one game really got me to be a big Penn State fan. It was in 2001. They were playing the Ohio State Buckeyes. This was back, I think, October 29th in 2001, right after 9-11. And Joe Paterno was going for the all-time wins record to beat Bear Bryant's record, who was the coach of Alabama, who led him to six national titles. It was an all-time wins record, I believe, of uh, 321 wins. And Penn State was a decisive underdog this year. They weren't having a good year. And in the game, Ohio State was up at one point, 28-9. to nine. And during the game, they make a comeback. Zach Mills was the quarterback. And I was able to get in the game. I had a ticket, but I somehow my irresponsibility, I lost the ticket, then I got a student ticket. So I got in the student section during the game. I just wanted to mention this. And so they're down 28-9. They wind up coming back, winning the game 42-35. Uh, to 35. Uh, Exciting game. Uh, Paterno got carried off the field, and I was on the field. And here is a visual of Beaver Stadium, which is the second biggest stadium in the country behind the big house. And uh, here was the moment when Paterno broke the record and people carried him off the field. Very exciting day. And uh, my brother and my cousins and my mom and dad were there. They're like, how the heck did he get on the field? Uh, just coincidence. Uh, and then later that year, Mar the Maryland Terrapins, who are a local team around here in College Park, were having a great season. They only had one loss that year in... 2001 and everything was going you know good for them they only lost the fourth they were playing Clemson in a game and they wound up uh uh beating Clemson at the, this game which was very exciting we were tailgating before the game but after the game uh the students of Maryland we we got out on the field people rushed the field and people took the goalpost and tried burning the goalpost near like the fraternity section of Maryland. I was a student at York College at the time, and my brother was a student up in West Central Pennsylvania. We wanted to just go see the game, and it was an exciting game, a very interesting. I have another good Maryland story in 2002. This it was Maryland Clemson again. It was my brother's birthday, 21st birthday. We took him down for the game, saw the game. It was good. And then uh, Maryland was beating Clemson, but there was a, a, a student from Clemson who was, at, you know, maybe a little out of it and wound up punching the Maryland mascot, the Terrapin, in the nose. So some people, a cop comes down. People come and just, uh, you know, take him away and all that. At the end of the game, we're walking back. People uh, that knew that kid, my my mom saw it, so like we were near it, and my mom they had my mom come in for questioning, uh, because I, the the person was from the DMV, the DC area, but uh, Clemson wanted to expel him, and my mom testified for the kid, which was a a funny event, but never hit the Terrapin mascot. That's one thing I definitely will say. And then another event at Penn State that year. It was Penn State, Nebraska, 2002, a big game. Nebraska played in the national title game the year before against Miami. And about that, uh, everyone wanted tickets. I mean, they're not as high priced as they are today. And me and my roommate, Pat Silver, bought tickets, but we bought them at halftime and couldn't get in. They sold us fake tickets. So we watched the game from 
a McDonald's. Not the best idea, but it was fun going around, uh, just watching the game. Just, you know, a good memory uh, in seeing it. And Penn State wound up winning. Another college football memory that I have is in uh, also 2003. This is 2003, where I got to the University of Notre Dame. And I had a cousin who was a RA there. We got to see the game. And just the pageantry, Notre Dame played BYU. Uh, very electric atmosphere. I got to see the College Football Hall of Fame. Which was out, which was outstanding. So that was something I greatly appreciated, and a very good trip. Heading in uh, to two thousand five, uh, I saw the uh, Georgia Florida game, which is otherwise known as the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. They call it. Uh, they have a big tailgate before the game. This was right when I joined the Navy, and we were stationed in Jacksonville. And and they played that game. A very exciting game. I was up for Georgia. That, you know, I was just new to the area. I just wanted, you know, to see the game. And the Florida fans could be a little aggressive. Uh, but it was a good game. But at the end of it, there was fighting at the end of it. Like the people were clearing the parking lot. So they stopped calling it the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. But don't worry. They still have the great tailgate uh, before the game. In Jacksonville, it's like the Battle on the River, which is a very good, uh, very good game. And so I enjoyed that. Next is another rival game in the state of Florida, Florida versus Florida State. And this was in 08. I went to the Florida, Florida State game. This is a picture of Tim Tebow, who played for Florida in 2008. And I was in the Navy. I was about, This is right before I went to Florida State. Uh, but my friend still went to Florida State. He was getting his PhD in math. But we saw this game, and it was drenched, like pouring down rain that week. Actually, it was it was a it was a wild weekend. During that week, I accidentally went to other people's car for some reason. Like it was in the morning before the game, which was pretty funny. But uh, this is a Tim Tebow going through the mud during the game. They. Florida beat uh, Florida State like 45 to like 14. I mean, it, the weather was just, but it was called like the Braveheart game uh, for Tim Tebow that I was there and uh, saw that game. J just a great memory. I'm not a big Florida Gators fan, but my sister-in-law, she went there. And ironically, she was at that world's largest outdoor cocktail party game. Next is, I went to Florida State. They had a, a legendary coach in Bobby Bowden. And I was there his last year in 2009. And they were putting pressure on him to resign. But the guy built the program uh, from 1976 until uh, 2009. And he got him there. He won two national titles. Uh, they won the ACC, I think, 12 to 13 times. Uh, unbelievable record. Had good standards. Well-liked uh, by everyone. And at the end of the year, the trustees called for his res resignation, and they put in Jimbo Fisher. But just before his last game, he wanted to have his last game in Jacksonville. And uh, it was the Gator Bowl against his former team, uh, the West Virginia Mountaineers. So he got to play, face his former team in his last game. And uh, just uh, at the third quarter, it was a sort of like he gave his hat like to the and, you know, everyone sort of emotional in his last game coaching and all he did uh, for uh, the university. And he gave a speech at the end, which was great. So that's one. So I could say I saw Joe Paterno break the record in the Bobby Bowden's uh, last game, which is uh, monumental. Next is, you know, this is Jimbo Fisher's first year. This wasn't from 2010, as you can see. I just needed to show the game. That this was like in 13. But in 2010, uh, Florida ha State did not beat Florida in six tries. And the game was at Doe Campbell. Uh, this was Jimbo Fisher's first year after Bowden left. And Florida State finally beat Florida after all these tries. And it was exciting. 
There was a little bit of fighting in the stands. I broke some of it up, though, between uh, the fan bases at a rival game, which, uh, you know, was good. But it was just celebration. The fireworks going, people celebrating, finally, you know, overcoming that. Uh, so I saw I was privileged to see that rival game. And then this is one in 11. This was Florida State. This is They have, like, a good fan base, like Garnet and Gold girls or, like, the Garnet and Gold uh Guys, and, they, and people, like, you know, paint their face and all that. This was at 11. Everyone was hyped up. We were playing Oklahoma. We were on game day. You know, everyone was hyped up. Uh, we went to Blues in the game 23 to 13, but this was in uh, 2011. And I noticed from the shirt, this is our time. That was a 2011 theme uh, for them. So I was, it was a subpar year, but the game and just the anticipation of it, the town going crazy. Uh, was not Oklahoma Sooner fans very nice, you know. They they were laid back, nice, and showed a lot of class, which I appreciate it. And then in twelve, we played Clemson. We're on game day again. We finally win on game day, which was real nice, and uh, I was real happy to see that. So I, you know, was watching some games, and I got in the area, and. My goal was I wanted to see some more stadiums, uh, you know, from other areas. So I decided to go to West Virginia. This is in Morgantown. I saw them in 2017 when they played Oklahoma State. Uh, Morgantown, nice town, good area, uh, good restaurants and bars. Uh, stadium is good. Uh, filled with a pack. Fans, very dedicated. And I also like the uh, pepperoni roll. That, that's like a, a coal miner's uh a treat they have, uh, which was uh, f famous in West Virginia. Very good. I tend to go back to Morgantown, which was good. And then later that year, if you could see, that this is Tennessee. I went to Tennessee in Knoxville, drove there nine hours, saw them play LSU. Very good game. It was drenched. It was raining, though, a miserable game. Peyton Manning was there at halftime of the game. He presented something. At half, that's Peyton's alma mater. But, you know, I was singing Rocky Top. Wish I was down on Rocky Top, down in the Tennessee hills. Ain't no smoggy smoke on Rocky Top. Ain't no telephone bills. I can, I can sing the whole thing. But very good. And it's right near Dollywood also, th that area. So they have a lot of that area. The Gatlingburg area near Knoxville has a lot of to offer when planning a vacation. Just outstanding. And the stadium is good. This is like the sixth largest stadium right there. And here's Clemson. This is Death Valley Memorial Stadium. I went there. That's, the crowd there is very good. I went there twice. Being a Florida State fan, 0-2. Oh Never saw Florida State win there, uh, going there. But the energy and they come like when it comes sunset or sundown, it looks very nice at the stadium. I experienced from the nosebleed and down below. Very good. Uh, and I, I plan to come back there. I always have uh, a good time. They have the Esso Club, which is like a good restaurant bar there. It's uh, famous. Next uh, stadium that I saw and this is uh, in uh, 2021, where we got to go back to stadiums after COVID. And during that year, I, I was on a tear seeing stadiums. I uh, went to Wake Forest one week in North Carolina. And then during, uh, you know, weeks later, I went to two during that week. I saw uh, Carolina play and Duke play in one day. These are only nine miles apart. And then I also got to see uh, Clemson that year. And then I decided to make a trip to the Horseshoe, which is the third largest stadium in Columbus, Ohio, which is the state capital of Ohio. And I, I you know, was enjoying the stadium. And I wanted to see them, you know, uh, you know, dot the I and the dot the I and the O when they do Ohio. And you can see Ohio on there for that stadium. I mean, the stadium, it's not, they're, they're not connected, which is good. And they have a wide range of refreshments in the stadiums. 
which is very good. You can get a margarita there. They they were selling in the stadiums. So that is one thing I do like about the horseshoe in going there. The next stadium that I saw is LSU Stadium. And this is in the Superdome, uh, New Orleans, where the New Orleans Saints play. But Florida State and LSU had a series of games in 2022 and 2023 where they were playing in this game. Florida State uh, is winning the series in this game. And they wound up winning this game 24-23 on a mixed sister point. But the thing I liked about New Orleans, besides, you know, Bourbon Street and all that, I got to see it for a few days, is the stadium they have was impeccable. They had everything, uh, like, you know, the New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame. You got to see Archie Manning, Pistol Pete Maravich, all the legendary Saints players. Very good. And it had a lot to offer. Plus, all, all of the Cajun dishes were very good, which was awesome. And so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that, even if I, I was on the top row. But you could see in Mercedes-Benz Stadium how constructed it is and how, how good uh, it looks. And then last year, I wanted to see the biggest stadium they have, which is the Big House in Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan. I decided to go see Michigan, Ohio State on Thanksgiving weekend in 2023, and they were both undefeated at the end of the year. And, you know, I, I wasn't dour about this. I was very excited, very infused uh, going into this and seeing Michigan. For, for Because they'd never been to Michigan before, but I went to a great restaurant, the Gandhi Dancer, for Thanksgiving, you know, they, very good stuff. And then uh, I also, the night before, went to a Penn State-Michigan State game in Detroit to see that stadium, the Lions Stadium, which was very impressive. They had all the amenities in that stadium. Uh, but this was special. This game was special because everyone was standing. It was 110,000 plus sold out for the game. And... I, you didn't miss a, a play. Plus, they had all the facilities ready. If people needed to go to the restroom, there were so many. You didn't have to wait long in line. These, they're well prepared for this at the big house in Michigan. And they're not the largest stadium for nothing. And I looked around. They had all the different types of, uh, you know, when they won national titles and that all the way. Like they won, I think they won the second most behind Alabama, but I think 11 of them were like in 1902 to like 1930 when Fielding Yost was coaching, which is ages ago, which really doesn't count in the contemporary, uh, you know, era. And then I saw like they have uh, Tom Brady, Charles Woodson. That So that was very good. And uh, I did enjoy that. And so, you know, I think I've seen a lot of uh, college football, and I have plans to see more college football in the uh, going forward, going forward with this. And some of my plans are, I'm just going to give some heads up that I want to see this year. If people are interested, if not, no biggie. I'm just going to say, I'm going to be at Alabama when uh, it's Georgia, Alabama, number one, number five in the country. Alabama is like the seventh largest stadium. Then I'm going to go to Washington, Iowa, in Iowa City two weeks later. Then I'm going to Florida State, Miami. And then right after that, I'm going to West Virginia at Cincinnati, see another city in Ohio. And then I'm doing a Texas trip, Kentucky at Texas and Austin. And then I'm going to go to College Station for Texas, Texas A&M, where they're going to renew their rivalry in 2024. And then Army, Navy at the end. So I'm going to see uh, two two of the most expensive games this year of Texas, Texas A&M, and Army-Navy. Army-Navy is going to be played in uh, uh, up at the Commander Stadium. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a great time of college football. And, you know, I, I'm going to take advantage. I'm definitely not going to be dour about it. I'm going to be happy. Thanks. 
Thank you, Patrick. So the question in my